Hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the National Academy of Science and Technology for their kind invitation for me to share some of my thoughts on curriculum-induced learning loss before and during a pandemic. Let me start with the following observation. Here we have the scientific productivity measured by the number of published papers comparing different countries, including some ASEAN countries. Uh, on the left table, we have the number of published papers, and uh, as you can see, the numbers for the Philippines is quite low compared with Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, and so on. On the right is a measure of the research influence as measured by the number of citations. And again, the Philippines is below that of Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. And part of the reason for this is that there are very few uh, Philippine researchers in, in the sciences. And why is that? If we look at the next page, we have here that the feeder for our masteral, doctoral researchers would actually come from basic education. And it is at the masteral and uh, doctoral level that people publish scientific papers. So there are more than 27 million students in the Philippine basic education. And if you notice, this is much, much more than the total population of Singapore, which is just 5.7 million. But then Singapore beats us in, in research influence and research productivity. Therefore, let's take a look at the basic education at, at the high school level. What are the numbers? Here we have the performance indicators in the past quarter of a century. There were a series of international assessments. In 1996, for example, we had the themes or trends in international math and science studies where the Philippines ranked 39 out of 42 participating nations. There was a team's uh, repeat in the year 2000 and we ranked 36 out of 38 nations. In 2003, another team's, we ranked 42 out of 45 participating nations. And decades later in 2018, we participated in another international assessment, the PISA, which is the Program for International Student Assessment. And we rank, rank uh, second to the last in math and science, number 78 out of 79 nations, and the last in reading. So what could be the cause of this long running consistent low performance as far as our basic education is concerned? There are many factors, but we talk, talk about congested curriculum as a possible cause, the spiral curriculum, the conventional teaching methods, and of course, the migration of good teachers. This, these are all important factors which could give us this uh, very low performance for decades. Now, what is this spiral curriculum? Let us define or understand the spiral curriculum in contrast to the disciplinal curriculum. So on the left, we have the spiral curriculum, and it simply means that, for example, in grade seven, grade seven students get a taste of the different sciences. Uh, first 10 weeks, first quarter, they have earth science, followed by biology, then chemistry, and then physics. And then the following year, grade eight, more of the same. It's a mixture of the different topics, different subjects, up to grade 10. In contrast, the disciplinal curriculum it, it's from first quarter to fourth quarter for grade seven, it's just purely general science. For grade eight, it's purely biology. For grade nine, it's purely chemistry. And for grade 10, for the whole school year, it's purely physics. So if you compare this with a spiral curriculum, the spiral curriculum is like uh, watching a movie, right? wherein for the first 30 minutes of the movie, they, the, the grade seven students would look at it, the first 30 minutes. And then the next 30 minutes of the movie, they, they see it the following year, grade eight. And the following, the next 30 minutes, they watch that same movie uh, 
for another 30 minutes and finally in grade 10 they watch the latter part ending of the movie so you can all already see how difficult it is for the students to really understand by the time they're in grade 8 they would have forgotten the start of, of, of the movie and it's the same in when when you're dealing with with different subjects in the spiral curriculum students have forgotten the foundations of the subject when continued after a year so the the teacher will have to repeat and remind the students this is really a waste of time compared with the disciplinal curriculum where they can go deep uh, towards mastery for one year for just one subject and with the spiral curriculum there's also a temptation some teachers in maybe some schools uh, a teacher in grade seven might be teaching different subjects uh, the teacher might be teaching earth science chemistry physics and biology because he or she is assigned to grade seven and it's it might be the same story for grades eight nine and ten so the teacher becomes a, a you know a master of everything but it's not really her expertise so this is one weakness of the spiral curriculum so let's look at this problem three analysis um at the bottom would be the root causes the trunk would be the main problem and the consequences would be the leaves and the branches so if you look at education the causes there are many but the main ones would be a legislation of an ineffective curriculum and this has actually been done another cause would be the lack of qualified teachers in basic education maybe due to migration and so on and because of these two causes comes the main problem the spiral curriculum the congested curriculum and a teacher-centered pedagogy and because of this main problem the offshoot the branches the consequences would be the consist consistently bottom uh, performance seller performance in PISA and TIMS. there are many college teachers who complain about unprepared college freshmen there are a lot of reports of unprepared uh, non-readers in fact in high school and even in elementary and of course this would translate into unqualified personnel for the fourth industrial revolution so let's let's look at this uh, discuss this further now note that there have been curricular changes in the philippine basic education uh, say from 1970s all the way to 2013 so we've been oscillating from disciplinal curriculum to spiral curriculum to disciplinal curriculum to spiral curriculum and oftentimes um, there's not really data analyst uh, analy data analysis of the data once this curriculum is being changed and um, these are the names of the programs uh, attached to it SEDP would be secondary education development program and so on and 2013 we went back to the spiral curriculum which is again to my mind very problematic so again let's look at the spiral curriculum and some of the consequences the students in the spiral curriculum, uh, as you know, there is physics in grade seven, eight, nine, and 10, a little of physics, uh, grade seven, just eight to 10 weeks and so on. And then that is matched of course with the spiral mathematics uh, subjects. And if you notice, for example, in the present curriculum, grade seven physics, they have to discuss kinematics but any physicist, if you ask any physicist to discuss deeply with mastery kinematics, you would need all the mathematics that you have a student has to learn starting from grade seven all the way to grade 10. They need to know laws, laws of exponents, equations in two variables, all the way to solutions of polynomial equations. But how could you possibly go deeply with mastery the kinematic uh, discussion in physics at grade seven when they don't have yet this mathematical background this mathematical background will come will be learned at later years so that is one very glaring defect of the spiral curriculum which leads to lack of mastery by the students in the different subjects this is just an example in physics on the other hand if you contrast it with the disciplinal curriculum remember in disciplinal curriculum 
um, grades, grade seven, general math, grade eight, purely algebra, go deeply for one school year. For grade nine, purely ge geometry, grade 10, trigonometry, and the same with the uh, uh, sciences in the disciplinal curriculum. So for example, grade eight, they discuss biology purely, then chemistry, grade nine, and then physics grade 10. So notice that putting physics at grade 10, by the time they deal with all the subjects from kinematics and so on, they would, the students would already have learned all the mathematical tools, all the mathematical prerequisites uh, needed to go deeply on a subject. So in the disciplinal, you can really go all the way uh, as compared with the spiral curriculum. So, Let's talk about congested curriculum. Um, this is the present curriculum. You can Google this. Uh, it's available uh, online. This is under the spiral curriculum. And let's take, for example, grade eight mathematics. In particular, let's zero in on the second quarter, week one. So these are the topics to be discussed in one week. For grade eight students, these are 14 year old students. Okay, so there are many adults probably listening to me now, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this subject. For example, in one week, the, the 14 year old students will have to differentiate linear inequalities in two variables from linear equations in two variables. It They have to learn in one week together with that uh, an illustration illustrates and graphs linear inequalities in two variables. And then they have to learn within that one week, solves problems involving linear inequalities in two variables. So this is the an example of a congested curriculum. So teachers uh, have this tendency to just brush through all these topics. Now, to discuss in one week all these topics, what are the prerequisite competencies? To discuss this effectively and with mastery, students would have learned linear equations in one and two variables. They would have learned finding the solution of a linear equation. They should have learned already graphing a linear equation in one and two variables. Even graphing one variable would be, many college students would find that, uh, would find that difficult. And uh, linear inequalities in one and two variables this should be number four and five. And finding solution sets, which could be infinite, by the way, by graphing and elimination. So these are, these are the prerequisite uh, topics that should have been learned by students in order to learn in one week uh, this, this math subject. So it, it's very, very congested. And um, well, you could already guess the end result, uh, the understanding of the students. So this perennial lack of students' mastery due to the curriculum, this curriculum-induced loss of learning, can be due to a spiral curriculum. It could also be due to a congested curriculum. For example, in the spiral curriculum, topics discussed end up not suitable to age level or mathematical preparation. Uh, we gave an example of that in physics where kinematics in grade seven uh, would need all the mathematical preparation, but these mathematical subjects, topics are discussed years later in grades eight, nine, and 10. The spiral curriculum, as well as the congested curriculum, could lead to the following problems. It would tempt teachers to rush through subjects without the learner's mastery of the topic for both spiral and congested. And there could be super superficial coverage which makes deep learning impossible for many. Of course, the congested curriculum would end up, essential topics would end up uh, not no longer discussed and essential and non-essential topics would be given normally equal weight. The teacher would just look at the topic and then discuss it, rush through it, whether it's an essential or non-essential, they're given equal footing. So these are the the pitfalls of a congested curriculum as well as a spiral curriculum. Let's look at again our problem three analysis. We have been discussing uh, spiral curriculum and congested curriculum. Um, the pitfalls involved with this 
with this curriculum induced uh, learning loss. And I also listed here uh, teacher centered pedagogy. And let me just mention in one slide something about this item. We have been implementing in our school uh, since 2002 the CVIF dynamic learning program, which has in fact been shown to be robust against disruptions in education like during the pandemic. At the moment, there are roughly around 700 schools all over the country uh, which are now uh, implementing the CVIF dynamic learning program. It's a systems approach to process induced learning. It incorporates 21st century skills like critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, communication, skills needed for the fourth industrial revolution. And this program has been applied at the elementary, secondary, and tertiary levels. So this is this program is a departure from the teacher-centered pedagogy. And in fact, uh, this is also related with the discussion on the, on the curriculum. Before 2013, we were still implementing or the, the whole country was still implementing the disciplinal approach. And we were able to cover under the disciplinal curriculum, we were able to cover 90% um, even sometimes even in a math subject, we were able to finish the whole required competencies required by DepEd and still one month to go in the school year. On the other hand, in the spiral curriculum, many schools are having difficulty. They're only able to cover, it, it ranges from being able only to cover 40% to 75% of the required curriculum in the spiral uh, progression. So this is again another experience on our part contrasting the disciplinal and spiral curriculum where we cannot cover much in the spiral as also experienced by the other schools. So, so what would be my recommendations and resolutions? The first one is quite serious which is to amend the 2013 Republic Act 10533 to delete the provision of Section 5G that the curriculum shall use the spiral progression approach. We should not tie down the hands of the many schools all over the country to follow the, the spiral curriculum in view of the problems that, that we have already cited. In fact, some accredited schools in Metro Manila have already opted to go disciplinal, to follow the disciplinal curriculum rather than the spiral, because in their best judgment, the disciplinal curriculum would allow their students to have deeper mastery of the different subjects. Now, it would take a lot of time to amend a Republic Act. So my second recommendation would, would be for this coming school year, 2021, 2022, as an emergency measure in view of pandemic conditions, that public and private schools be allowed to choose whether to follow the spiral or disciplinal curriculum. For those people in power, you could hopefully find ways and means to enact an emergency measure so that schools which would like to go disciplinal can be allowed so in spite of the Republic Act. My third recommendation would be to decentralize curriculum implementation. There could be a friendly competition among DepEd divisions, which may help improve Philippine performance in international assessments instead of hopefully, well, if the central office would make a wrong decision, then the whole, all the schools in the whole country might go in the wrong direction. So just like in economics, uh, friendly competition would be good for the consumer. So if we decentralize the curriculum, curriculum implementation, it might also be good for everyone in the Philippines. So thank you for listening and uh, good day.